Welcome to another Final Element Method tutorial. Today we're going to learn how do we apply the axisymmetric thermal analysis in Abacus. And we're going to compare that with a fully 3D model. So here's the problem statement. Assuming that we have a aluminum tube uh, with hot gas flowing inside and the temperature for the hot uh, hot gas is 500 Celsius. And in the center of the tube, we have a cooling uh, cooling uh, part section. And the coolant in this section is minus 100 Celsius. And the coolant has a designed, uh, the diameter of the coolant has a, is designed in a quadratic function written here. And all the convection properties and the, uh, the thickness, sorry, the thickness for the pipe is 0 0.01 meters. Uh, and uh, all the convection coefficients is given here. So the aluminum material property is also given here. We need density, thermal conductivity and specific heat in this problem. And always remember, if you only do static, uh, steady state analysis, then you only need the thermal conductivity. That is the only thing you need. Um, well, for this problem, we're going to try to use axisymmetric element to do the analysis. Uh, also, we are going to model the you model the same problem using the solid element, but only model half of the model, which means 180 degrees of the pipe. Finally, we are going to compare the same problem um, with a steady state analysis compared to another transient cases. So for transient cases, uh, the input hot gas has a temperature change from 25 Celsius to 500 Celsius in five seconds. And we're going to see whether these two results matches with each other. And <clears throat> so, uh, so first uh, set your working directory. I already did this step. And then we create a part. First, let's do axisymmetric model. Pipe. So choose axisymmetric deformable. Uh, we, uh, we create a, we're not using shell element here. We are going to use a, a solid or we're going to use a, a area here to represent. So we can see the thermal gradients inside the, through the thickness direction. And also we are going to uh, apply the symmetri symmetricity here. And since this tube is very long, we just give it a uh, one meters for analysis. And it is enough to simulate uh, all the uh, temperature change inside the tube. And for symmetric thermal, as we mentioned before, uh, if you have a symmetric condition in thermal, then the heat flux should be equal to zero. And now let's see how do we do it in Abacus. So approximate size, let's do maximum two here. Since in Abacus, when you input a model, uh, the symmetric axis is always y-axis, so we cannot directly use this formula. The diameter should be equal to 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 y-square. So you definitely can uh, do this geometry in any other CAD software, or uh, you can do it, uh, you can make this model in Abacus. So we are going to learn how do we make this model with a function, uh, with a functional design node in the in Abacus. 
So we're going to click this one, create splines through points. And I already listed here. So this is all the X and this is all the Y we need. So I create this in mat, uh, using MATLAB. You can use uh, mathematics or even hand calculation to do it. But remember that this is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.4 X squared is diameter. But in Abacus, what we need is radius. So you need to divide by two for that. If you do it, um, so we're going to copy this one to the abacus. Oh, okay. It, it has too many digits. So let's do 0 0.1 and 0. Second one, uh, 0 0.99, fine, 0 0.05. Uh, oh, sorry, I think I make a mistake here. So 0 0.0995. And and next one, uh, 0 0.0980, 0 0.1. So then click down and we can get this splendid line. Now we are going to simulate uh, this part, which is, we, we are going to simulate one meters of it, which is long enough. And so we start from this point, which is 0 0.05, 0 0.5 and extend to 0 0.05, 1.5. So this is the geometry you should have. And now we use this offset tool of the curve. Select all the curve we just created. And then the offset is, should be the thickness of it is 0 0.01. So you can see the offset line here. And then we connect all the line to form a shape. So this is the cross section of your aluminum tube. And now we assign property. The property should be aluminum. And we just put all the properties in. Density is 27,000. Conductivity should be 240. And the specific heat is uh, 900. Now we make the section. Since this is an axisymmetric model and 
think about that if this rotates for 330 degrees that should be that should form a solid so we use solid here so although this look like a 2d geometry but it should be solid now we assign the material property we don't need to create the sets and aluminum from section now uh go to assembly create the model using independent and now in the step create the static weight analysis or let's say static states analysis so let's choose heat transfer here and choose steady state instead of transient and for steady state uh, it doesn't need it doesn't matter it's like what you choose here you just leave it default and now let's go to interaction interaction is to assign the convection so the first convection definitely is gas choose the surface film condition and choose this the inner surface for your tube and the convection coefficient should be uh it's written here 10 i'm oh, sorry it's written inside it's 200 while the sink temperature is 500 it's all in celsius and then we assign the we create another thing which is the air choose the pipe surface for air the uh, convection coefficient 10 and temperature 25 Create the third one, which is uh, the coolant. So the coolant temperature is minus 100, and the convection coefficient, uh, I think I'm not uh, writing here, but it should be larger than the gas is, is 600. So choose this surface sink temperature minus 100 coolant film coefficient 600 and double check the all the coefficients and then uh, we go to the load so for thermal when we don't actually need a load any surface that is not assigned to any coefficients is considered to be thermal isolation isolated so what we need what we the only thing we need to do is to assign an initial temperature before the step happens so uh assign a few output sorry initial temperature so uh, constants through regions and the magnitude let's do 25 which is the same as the air temperature so finally let's do mesh first let's choose mesh control use the structural one to make the mesh looks better and then element type uh, we need a heat transfer element so for heat transfer element it should be a four node linear axisymmetric heat transfer uh, collagen so now we assign the node first we assign global size so for global size, uh, we can do things. The entire length is uh, about 1.5. So 
So we can do 0 0.05. It doesn't need to be very fine. If you want it to be finer, 0 0.02, probably this should be better because this is a 2D, uh, this is the analysis is like a 2D. So it doesn't need to, uh, it can be fine. Like the mesh can be fine. It doesn't take very long time to analysis. But we want, what we want is three elements through the thickness. So at least we can see the change. So we as, use the uh, seed edge tools. Select this edge, hold, hold shift and select the other edge. And we choose by number here and we want at least three elements through the thick thickness. You can even make it more if you want. So now we draw the mesh. You can see that there are three elements through the thickness. And now we can create a job. Call it uh, it's a symmetric. So while it's running, you can actually start changing your model. So the next step, we are going to compare this with uh, uh, with the chancing problem. So go back to the step, uh, add it. Instead of status state, we are going to use chancing here. So, uh, for transient, you need to set your time. So uh, here we, cause this is the temperature difference between the gas and the coolant is very large. It's like 600. So we want a relatively long time for it. You can, you can keep increasing this total time until the result reaches uh, reach some kind of uh, convergence or steady state. So let's do a southern here, <clears throat> maximum southern. And you need to enter maximum allowable temperature change here. Uh, for now we do five. Uh, let's do 10 here to make it faster. Oh, sorry, this, let's, should be the same as this one, so a southern. So increment some time. Increment the time here. Am I? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the number of increments. We don't need actually need that much number of increment. The time should be this one. So it should be a southern here. That means a southern seconds. Another thing we need to change is the interaction. Uh, for this problem, when you have a transient state, you have a ramped uh, increasing temperature for the, for the ambient instead of uh, constrained temperature. So here, um, Instead of the, sorry, this is for the air. So this is the hot gas. Instead of uh, instant, instantaneously, you can change it to a tablet. Call it like a chance and So let's use tabular. So for tabular, the, uh, let's increase uh, row. So first, the first time we have is when time equals to zero, the amplitude should be, uh, should be 25. And when time equals to five seconds, it increased to 500. Then all the way to a thousand, 
seconds, the amplitude remains 500. But remember that this, now we can choose the amplitude, but remember that this amplitude is going to be multiplied to this sink temperature. So we input one here because we already in, have the amplitude information in this, in this info, in this one. Now everything is the same. Uh, we can run another job. Transient, transient analysis. This may take longer time, but we can check this. So choose nodal temperature and then in the option common, choose the free age. You can see how the temperature is distributed. We can capture the field output, get the X, Y data, and then create from the field output unique nodal, choose the temperature, and then pick select from the from the age. Let's select the center of the coolant. So this one and add another selection. Let's see how different from the inside to the outside. And if you plot them, you see for steady state is just have one step from zero to one is just one step. This is the steady state response. So when it reaches steady state, it seems like um, the inner surface should be somewhat around 737 or something. And uh, sorry, the inner one is should have higher temperature, which is above 40. And the outer one is around 36 or something. We can keep this data. And then let's go back to the job and we can see our transient state also is done. So for transient, you have a time of increment. Use this tools to, uh, sorry, this is heat flux. So let's do nodal temperature. You can see how the temperature is changing through time. And to check whether it is convergence though or not, uh, we can also use towards XY data create or in the manager. We create from ODB file, nodal temperature, select the point of the inner surface, then select another point from the outer surface. Now we can plot this too. You can see that it reaches steady state and the value is very similar. Let's plot them together. Because the time is, uh, sorry, let's plot this two first. If you want to see, um, check the result, if you check the result, this one is slightly larger than 40, it's like a 42 or something. And this is around like 37. It should be the same as the, uh, the steady state resp uh, response. We, we already don't have it, but it should be the same. So this is um, probably we can compare in this way. Uh, add another window and then put them together. Select the second one and select the result from SSD and in this result, we have the tool we just had. And sorry, I think we need to recreate it. So create field output. And nodal temperature, reselect the two points we have. This one, add another one, this one.
Now you can compare this with this one. So the final result is, is the same. That's, that is a comparison between status day and the transient. For transient, you have more processing between like the density and the specific heat will affect your response in the transient state. So, oh, sorry. So this is a comparison between steady state and transient problem. Now we are going to have a comparison between the axisymmetric and 3D model. So, we save this one. And we open a new one. Now we do a 3D and a solid revolution. Call it solid model. Approximate awesome size, uh, let's do three now. Same things here. We first draw the cross section of it, which should use this table. But uh, let's let's do it faster. So we only use one, three, five, seven rows of the data. So zero point one zero, and then point oh nine eight. and then. 0.092 and then 0.082 and then 0.06a finally 0.05.5 and then click down here and use the straight line towards. So start from this point and at 0 0.05, uh, 1.5. And same thing, use the offset rule towards to create an offset of 0 0.01 and then connect, oh, sorry, I forgot to click down. and use the line tool to connect them together. And we only simulate half of it, so it should be 180 degree. So this is your tube. Actually, we can even simulate only 90 of it, so make two sym symmetric condition. But let's do 180 here. So create this one, um, aluminum, the material property, same thing. But here we are going to try to do only steady state response. So we don't need density or uh, thermal conduct uh, or the specific heat. What we only need is thermal conductivity and the value for it is um, 240. Great section, definitely this is a solid model, solid section, and then assign the section to the model. Create section inter, uh, independent, uh, sorry, create instant, independent instant and step, we only apply the heat transfer. Static state uh, analysis. And step, uh, change it to static state. <clears throat> and then interaction, assign uh, gas, Film condition 
choose the inner surface and the film coefficient should be 200 and 500 temperature. And then uh, air, choose this part, film coefficient um, 10 and uh, temperature 25. And then uh, finally coolant, choose the outer surface for the coolant section, film coefficient 600, temperature minus 100. Double check all your condition is correct. Now, in the load, we assign initial temperature. Sorry. Initial temperature. So with a magnitude of 25. Now we create a mesh. So we can use sweep here because this is a rotational geometry. And then uh, element type, go lower and select the heat transfer element. It should be a, a no linear heat transfer element. And then sign property 0 0.02, uh, let's do 0 0.2. But through thickness, we wanted to at least have three elements. So we choose this line, hold shift, select this line. And also everything, that rep every line that represent the through thickness direction, which means this line and also this line. And by number, we need it to be three. Now we can mesh it. You can see that through thickness, it has three elements, but because this is a 3D element, it takes longer time. It already have 24 southern elements. So we are not going to make it very fine mesh here, just to make it faster. If your result is not good, then you can always make your mesh finer. Oh, sorry, so let's do, cut it three, uh, model 3D. Steady state analysis. So to compare, <clears throat> sorry, to compare the analysis time, uh, Definitely the axis symmetric is way faster than the model 3D. And you can see that the steady state response is also way faster than the transient analysis. So if you only want a steady state, then you can apply the steady state response. Now we can check the results. Temperature. So uh, let's add another window. Let's use this to have the axisymmetric uh, steady state. And we can use the <clears throat> uh, ODB display options and we can sweep the elements three from zero to 180 and with number of uh, 180. So the angles it will be one. Now you can compare this two. You can link them together and show this one. Oh, I forgot to change the 
change it to nodal temperature. Well, they have different, oh, sorry, I think uh, the coordinate system is different. So 180 degrees, this, is, this shows the inner surface while this shows the outer surface. But you can see the results and the values are exactly the same. So no matter you're using axisymmetric or using a 3D model, it doesn't matter, the result will be the same. So that's all for today's tutorial. Hope that you can learn something from this video. And thank you for listening. I hand it back to Professor Goyal.